back with the best NFL analyst in the business. Are you enjoying it? I am. Yeah, what is it? What is your favorite part? Um, I would say when we finish the pregame, first off, the people. It's, it's, and I've known a lot of these guys and girls um, because I've only been in the NFC my whole like 25 years as a coach. Shout out to Fox. Yeah, and so that, I've been in the NFC, and I, I love the time when we've finished the show and the games are on and we're in this giant green room and we're just watching the games. And, but there's eight of them on, you know, and then there's gonna be a halftime segment, then there's gonna be a post game segment, but it really is the part that fills mm. being away from a team. Because when you leave, coaching, which I did, then it's like crickets, it's quiet. Like, you, you might go golf, you have your family, <clears throat> your spouse, but it's, there's that void of that, the club or whatever. And so when we're watching those games, you know, you kind of get that. Yeah, you, did you leave coaching? Well, I did, and okay. you just asked like, me how I like being an analyst. Yeah, so no, well, it well, leads me to this. All right, let's get to the it segment. It leads me, well, because. You're beating around the bush. Let's well, go. Well, the Panthers, we'll start there. I don't yeah. want to talk about the Panthers. I don't particularly find that vacancy super interesting. You can tell me otherwise. I know it's no, a shock. I, was asked I heard about what you this. told Colin. I get it. I, I just, I'm, I'm, my point yesterday was real, real simple, is when these jobs open up, generally speaking, they're broken. And so there's yeah. no utopia. And, and um, rarely does one open up. Because Colin made the point, well, they don't have a quarterback. Well, most of the time they don't. Like, what happened in Green Bay is unusual. Or what happened, I mean, so all of them have things that need to be addressed and fixed, yeah. what have you. The I'm thing that's interested. different is that when does it ever open up in week five, though, in our business? Weird. Yeah, it's different. Did you know it was going to open up no, in week five? No, I had five? no clue. You had no idea, huh? No, no. I mean, I'm like you. Okay. Um, but well, that's you're unusual. Not, well, you're me minus no. 20 years of coaching experience. No, 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 no. And, that was unusual, I think. Uh, okay, so this happens. What's not what's not unusual, but what's fascinating to me is we were, I was on the air yesterday. That happens. Everyone says Wilkes, whatever, but your name is trending. Your name, when something's going wrong with a play call in Dallas, your name starts trending. My Twitter. name was I'm trending just, because it was announced that I was going to be on your show that's right, with that's FanDuel right. up in Adams true. in the morning. Are you, try, are you trying to be, like, be humble for some reason? What no. Is, like, where, what happened to my friend Sean Payton is my question. <laughs> uh, but be, be honest here. What does it feel like? Just I'm asking you as a friend. What does it feel like to be the bell of the ball when it comes to coaching? Um, I don't know. I, I think... There's, there's, it's uncomfortable because I know so many of these guys. Like, I'm, I'm a friend with Mike McCarthy. Um, I know Matt Rule. He's, I've spoken to his team when he was at Baylor. Um, I know these guys. So, yeah, I, th I think that's one of the um, difficult parts about it. Um, and I really do enjoy the role I'm in now. Like, yeah. a lot. I can tell you like it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and... I think that there's a part of you that recognizes, man, if I do this, I'm going to live like 10 years longer mm -hmm. than if I do that. You know, and there's that inner battle that you have with getting back and, and there's an excitement that you have that's different, you know, because when, when you have a good Sunday, for instance, let's say you pick a game to win, you make some comments on air and they kind of come to fruition and you feel like, man, I kind of hit it out of the park today, and then you go home and watch the night game. When you prep all week and you win a game, it, it, there's nothing like it. Like, that, that is like a drug. Mm -hmm. And so there's a, it's, it's that addiction to that feeling of winning. I mean, we've seen it with some coaches, right? Like Bill Cowher, like do you see, uh, who, do you look at any other coach and sort of see how they've handled their? Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, I, look, Parcells has been a great mm -hmm. mentor for me, and, and but I really just pay attention to how I'm feeling. I really enjoy the, the job I have now. Um, and to answer your question, look, it's flattering, uh, and it's a lot better than hearing comments like, well, the last guy we'd want is. Right. You know. Right. And so, yeah. Well, you've earned it. You're on the top of everybody's list. Yeah. 
So um, what were you doing when David Tepper called you? Um, I, when he called me? Mm -hmm. I was unpacking, of course, and then I told him, I said, hey, we can't talk now, we'll break a rule. So, what did he just, what did you guys catch up on? David Tepper didn't call me. You're I, lying. I, I, he didn't, and did, I, he did can't, David and he Tepper, didn't. Okay. No, he did, did not. Did someone contact you about no, your interest in a potential? No, All right, no, dead anyway. serious. I'm being honest. Uh, you are. Yes, we actually 100%, have they can't do that. He's got a shot collar, lie detector test attached to him, places unknown, I don't want to talk about it, but they, he, it would have buzzed if he was lying. They, they can't do that. Yeah, um, I know, I know. You're not allowed to. No, I know, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. So, so talk to me about coaching destination attractiveness. What are three things that you, you're the belle of the ball, you just are. Just accept it. You're so humble, it's strange to me. Uh, what, are, what are you looking at? Prioritize what you're looking at when it comes to what might be interesting to you down the line. I, I, when I use the term functionality, you know, and, and it, it's, it's ownership front office, you, you just want everyone's oars to be in the same rhythm sequence. And I think one of the challenges in our league with a, with a number of teams is that's not the case. And so despite whatever talent's there, despite the talent of the GM mm -hmm. or the head coach, if, if it's not strong through the middle, then they have no chance of, of winning the ultimate prize. So quarterback isn't your number one priority? No, that is. But, but if you're waiting for the job that already has that in place, then that, so the minute you get to a place, like New Orleans in 06, we got to solve that problem. Right. And so we're looking at all our options. We're looking at the draft, um, the 06 draft, Leinart, Vince Young, Jay Cutler. We're looking at free agents that might you know, be able to hold the fort for a year or two. And then Breeze is released with an injury. We, um, we like the risk with the makeup of the player. And so that has to be addressed, yes. but. But what I'm talking about is beyond that. What I'm talking about is the ownership group, the front office group, is that all in concert? Because in some places it's not. And when it's not, I don't care who the quarterback is. Like in other words, then you don't have a good job. Right. You, you know what I mean? Then, then despite how, how good your game plan is, despite the talent you bring into the building, if, if those things aren't all on the same page, mm -hmm. then you have dysfunction and then you have, you know, a, a, an average to below average. Coach, is it safe to say then that you had a good job in New Orleans? Absolutely. So, and I would say a great job, great ownership. I miss Mrs. B. She's the best, right? My best friend's the general manager, Mickey Loomis. Like, and I miss him. That's the one thing that's undervalued for me was, all right, I'm stepping away. But, man, I miss those people because I enjoy being around them. Dennis Lausha and that, that, that ownership group, the people in the building. Um, so I'm not going to say I'm spoiled, but I know what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Like, I know what that looks like. And if you looked at our drafts, you know, everyone's on the same page as to what we're looking for. Makeup, football IQ, I could go on and on with the things that are important. And then all of these things then, along with the right decisions, and then pretty soon you win a lot of games, pretty soon you win a bunch of games. Where are you going with this, Kay? I'm going, well, because I, I mean. It's a it, great spot. It's a great spot, so is there, uh, you don't have to answer this, but my head is, is there a better spot? Is there a better spot than where you had it? I know Dennis Allen's doing his thing. I know that you are a champion yeah, of his. Yeah, I, I don't know so that, though, because I don't know the other spots as well. Like, I know the Saints intimately. I'm saying, but you were happy there. So I'm just, I think Saints fans would be very curious by the comments that you're making is all is I'm saying. Is that the reason for the helmet up there? You I know mean, I you, love the Saints. Like, That's why you and I are buddies, like, because of the Saints. But I have a feeling that, like, that little segment of your shelf can rotate. Yeah. Like if Cooper Cup's in here, you have a Rams Are you there. saying you're coaching the Rams next year? Is that breaking news? No, like what but are we I'm saying, saying is that saying? the one, pe like Dolly Parton, I feel like stays. She, you can't She's move Dolly. Forever. Do Dolly but I feel like the helmet cemented. comes and goes. The helmet can come and go. Well, I, I would ask you, if you're, you're telling me that helmet can come and go, you're open to all options. Is, are, are the Saints among those options potentially down I, I the line? I don't see a Fox helmet. I, I 
love my job with Fox oh right now. Oh my gosh, you're so, but, I know you do, but we all know you're going to go win a Super Bowl. We're not dumb, Sean. Like, you're right. going to go win a Super Bowl. You want to talk a little? I don't know where. Let's talk about some teams that you like. Let's talk a little football here. I think Mark Ingram is popping by the show, by the way. Nobody in the control room tell Mark Ingram that we have Sean Payton here because you've got to talk to him about some things. Yeah, I do. Who knows?